Hey guys, what's up? Justine here, and yes, I'm filming in a different setting today. I thought I would try filming in my living room because I have a huge big window here, and I feel like the light is just so much better than in my bedroom where it's a little bit more darker, so let me know if you guys like it. Um, the background isn't that nice, but you can't really see what's back there, so whatever. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about, I don't know how many I have, I think I have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, alright, 9, 9 nursing hacks. I've been wanting to do this video for so long, but for some reason I just couldn't manage to find enough hacks. I came up with a few of them on my own and then I did a little bit of internet searching to find some really good ones that I actually do use and that you guys can use as well. So we're going to get right into it and I hope you guys like it. So the first tip, which I'm sure most of you know, but some of you might not know because a lot of students or new nurses that I work with, they don't know this tip. So the first tip includes an NS syringe, and an IV, what is this? This is like not the Heplock, it's like the tubing. And an IV tubing. Now, don't ask me why I have this in my house, I just do. So the first tip is that when your IV fluids are done infusing into your patient's IV, when you disconnect, so this is where we're gonna get physical. All right, so I'm gonna open both of these up. So I'm only missing the IV tubing, which is the most important part of this, but let's just ignore the fact. You have your patient on his IV. This is their IV, right? You have your NS flush. So imagine I have tubing here. So I disconnect the tubing, keep it in my hand, keep it sterile, always sterile. I'm gonna take my flush, I'm gonna open the cap, and I'm gonna cap my tubing with this. Now, I don't know if this works on, like if this is a universal thing, but at my hospital, this totally works. So I'm gonna cap my tubing, now I can hang it and then I can proceed to flush my IV and then get rid of my syringe. So that is a handy dandy trick that definitely comes in handy when you don't have any IV tubing caps with you. You're always gonna have a syringe with you because you gotta flush your IV anyways. So that's your first hack. Number two, if your patient has horrible veins, you need them to dilate. So you can use the old trick of tapping. So your vein is not showing up too well. Tap the hell out of that vein, it should definitely pop up. If you don't want to hurt your patient, I mean, it shouldn't really hurt them, get a warm washcloth, apply it to the area, and have their arm dangle down. For sure, those veins are going to pop up at least a little bit. So definitely worth giving it a try. I've done this before, and it definitely works, right? Because heat's going to dilate those veins. So definitely, definitely try that. All right, number three, if you're putting a Foley into a female patient and you accidentally miss the urethra, now this has happened to all of us, don't feel bad about it, leave the Foley in and get a second one so that you don't miss twice. All right, number four is a trick that our PAB actually taught me and it works wonders, and that is when your patients have a stage one pressure ulcer and you're adding that triad or that IELTS paste, add some Vaseline into the mix. So get yourself a little um, like sterile or or it doesn't have to be sterile, a little specimen cup, add some IELTS paste and then add some Vaseline, mix it all up so that when you come to clean it off, it'll come off so much more easily. It'll just wipe right off because the Vaseline is kind of like a gelatinous, I guess, texture and it'll just wipe right off. All right, number five is something I found online and I actually think this is so clever and that's when you're going into an isolation room, wrap the diaphragm of your stethoscope in a glove, that way it won't get contaminated I thought that was so clever. I've never thought of doing that. I'm definitely going to be trying that soon. Number six is I saw online, like when you have a confused patient, give them some towels to fold, which definitely, definitely, especially for women, definitely works because I guess in their life they're used to folding clothes, right? Aren't we all? Um, and so they'll have that repeated action of folding. One thing that we do at work is we give them, like we will print off like uh, a drawing or a mandala or something, give them a couple crayons and have them color. That can keep them occupied for hours. So definitely, definitely, if you have a confused patient, they're in the jerry chair and they're causing trouble, give them something to color and it'll definitely keep them occupied. Number seven is something that a patient's daughter actually taught me. She worked in the, I think she was like a lab technician or a blood draw technician. She taught me that with patients that have very fragile, thin skin if you don't want them to hurt, and this works with pediatric patients as well, place a washcloth under the tourniquet to prevent their skin from getting caught within the tourniquet or from their skin to like 
get pinched you know what i mean so that's definitely i've tried it and it also definitely works all right number eight is something that we're all taught in nursing school and something that's super super simple that is that when you're taking your patient's respiratory rate pretend you're taking their pulse that way like if you tell them that you're taking their respiratory rate they're going to kind of think about it and be conscious about it and then it might not be accurate but if you're telling them you're taking their pulse they'll just act as if you're not doing anything and you'll get a better reading. Number nine, which is something that is super useful. You guys probably already know this, but if you don't, whenever you're removing a tegaderm or a piece of tape from a patient that's very hairy, it's gonna hurt. So what I recommend you do is take an alcohol swab and kind of just as you're pulling off the tegaderm with the tape, clean under and it'll help loosen up that tape that also definitely 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 works all right guys so those are my nine nursing hacks i hope you guys enjoyed please leave any other hacks you have down below i'm always looking to learn more hacks because we could all use them and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys